I want to welcome you to another pod for Israel. And I have with us again, Dr. Golan Broshi. It's so good to have you back. Praise the Lord. And we're going to be diving into uh, one of the most uh, bright and sunny, encouraging Important. books. Important. In the scripture, Ecclesiastes. Who's excited about Ecclesiastes? But I think what's amazing is you're going to bring out the gospel in Ecclesiastes. And I think that's amazing. If you guys have read the book, it's a little bit, can sometimes be a little depressing. Everything is meaningless, meaningless, meaningless is constantly repeated. But we're going to find the deep meaning inside of that meaningless. Yeah, and in the, you know, in the Hebrew Bible, in the, in the Old Testament, this this book it's actually it's called a scroll because it's so small and it's part of five scroll and the last part of the of the old testament which called ktuvim so it's right. not in the torah not in the prophets but with with ruth and uh, and with the um what's the name of the book that jeremiah wrote um lamentations lamentations yeah but song right. of songs so it's with five small scrolls right in the end so it's one of the closing books of the Old Testament, at least in the in, in the rabbinic perspective, so right. we see how important it is. Hmm. It's a, now the thing is that it almost got dismissed from the Old Testament. Right. The rabbis almost kicked it out, but for the last two verses, and I want to uh, give you a quote, and you can read it in English from the Talmud, tractate Shabbat. You can read in English why it was almost left out of the of the canonical scriptures. Okay. So it says, the sages sought to suppress the book of Ecclesiastes and declare it apocryphal because its statements contradict each other and is liable to confuse its readers. And why did they not suppress it? Because its beginning consists of matters of Torah and its end consists of matters of Torah. Its beginning consists of matters of Torah as is written, what profit has man of all of his labor, which he labors under the sun? Ecclesiastes 1, 3. And its ending consists of matters of Torah, as it's written. The end of the matter, having been heard, fear God and keep his mitzvot, for this is the whole man. Ecclesiastes 12. Yeah, so if it wasn't for the, for the final verses in the book, just right. in the final chapter, if it wasn't for them, we, we might, if it, it, Ecclesiastic wouldn't, wouldn't got in. Right. To the to, to the canonical scriptures, at least hmm. not for, for for rabbinic Judaism. Right. Yeah, we have it. We have it in other ancient manuscripts, but the rabbis almost took it out just because it's so provocative. Yeah. If it wasn't for the last, and and we'll touch we'll touch on that. But what you said when you quoted was really important. They say it allegedly contradicts. Uh, the each other that there's verses which contradicts other verses from the Bible and within itself and I want to give a few examples and that's really important when, when we're discussing discussing the the wisdom literature right. because if you can read from uh, Ecclesiastics seven two three uh, chapter seven two three an example for an alleged um, contradiction. Better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will take it to heart. Yeah. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. And now if you compare it to chapter 8, 15, what does it say? What, what, what does Solomon say there? 8, 15. In 8, 15, he says, so I commended enjoyment because... I, I commend enjoyment. Man has nothing better than yeah. under the sun than to eat, drink, and be so, merry. So, so in chapter 7, he says it's, uh, anger is better than enjoyment. And then in, in chapter 8, he says, I commend enjoyment. So the rabbi say, well, well, wait a minute. <laughs> is, joy, is joy a good thing or a bad thing? Is anger a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's, it allegedly contradicts. Now, I'll give you well, another. Well, you just have to read a little more and you'll say, uh, for by sad countenance, a heart is made exactly. better. Exactly. In other words, it's a teaching moment. Pain can be helpful. And that's the key. Well, that's the key. But but before the key, they give the, in okay. the Talmud, they give another example from a different book of Solomon, Proverbs. Proverbs 26 Verses 4 and 5, a classic example of an alleged contradiction. 4, 5. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. Yeah. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own yeah. eyes. So do not answer and answer. Yeah. I've so, always said, you, you know, this is for us believers. We say, I, it's kind of like saying, you really need to be led by the Spirit of God. Exactly. And the key, Solomon himself gives the key 
In Ecclesiastic 3, verse 1, he gives the key for, for, for wisdom literature. Psalm, it's, it's chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there's a season, a time for every purpose exactly. under heaven. Exactly. So th 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 there's a principle from the wisdom literature. You don't have to apply all the verses all the time. You, right. need to, you need to know where to apply this verse and where to apply this verse in your life circumstances. Exactly like with a fool, to know when to answer mm -hmm. and to know when not to answer. That's good. So there's no contradiction. It's just timing. Yeah. Timing is everything, as they say. But see, you know, I think that this is a problem a lot of us have with a lot of theological issues as well, because, well, we see God is fully just, and so he's fully just in justice, but God is also fully merciful. But, and it says, mercy and truth have kissed. Exactly. And so there's this, this paradigm we have to kind of understand is it's really all in his hands, and we need, above all, we cannot do good apart from the Spirit of God. We need his Spirit. Exactly. And and again, this is this is the, the hallmark of the wisdom literature. Yeah. The, that's good. The, the, there's there's wisdom from, from David, from King David, from Solomon, from Job. There's wisdom, but you need to be wise when to apply it. Now, one of the features of the literature of the, the wisdom literature is that it sees reality, it looks reality in the face, and it sees a problem. There's a problem because reality doesn't confirm the, the, w scripture, uh, allegedly, the, the, that's what that's what Solomon saw. And I'll give you an example. Actually, uh, Solomon is, is is having a test, and you can read it in in chapter two, uh, verse one to eleven. But you don't have to read everything. Just read verse one, chapter two, verse one. He's having a test, an experiment, to see if he can find any meaning in the promises of the Torah of God. Yeah, so he said, I said in my heart, come now and I will test you with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. But surely this also was vanity. Yep, and now in verse in verse 2, he, 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 he continues the experience. He's right. trying to, 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 to acquire more and more things that might give him meaning. And it's good things. Yeah. It's positive things. You, you can read in verse 2. I said of laughter, madness, and of mirth, what does it accomplish? I searched my heart and how to gratify my flesh with wine and guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold of folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their mm -hmm. life. And continue, verse 3. I made my works great. I built myself houses. I planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards, and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools with which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants. I had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. Exactly. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and special treasures of the kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds, I became great and excelled more than all who yeah. were before me in Jerusalem. And now pause. Okay, so he does an experiment. He says, I'm going to gain everything right. that the world has to offer mm -hmm. and see if it gives me any meaning. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, that's, you know, according to the Torah, if you obey God and you prosper, you get everything. You're going to be right. the head, you're not going to be the tail. So yeah. I'm going to gain everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to look for meaning. And the conclusion is amazing, is incredible. The conclusion in verse 11. And I looked on all the works that my hands had done and the labor which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no prophet under the sun. No prophet whatsoever under the sun. And this man, in this experience, he got, in, in the experiment, in the test, he got yeah. everything the world has to offer. Right. And he couldn't find any meaning if it's under the sun, and it, you know, it reminds me of what Yeshua said in Luke, in Luke chapter 9, 25, exactly what Yeshua said. Luke, uh, Luke 9, 25. So he said, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and himself is destroyed or lost? See, so if you gain the whole world, and that's what Solomon did. Yeshua said, if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul, you don't have God, yeah, it's only the under point? the sun. What, 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 what does it accomplish? What's the purpose? And we talked about it before the podcast, you know, about the, the, the people who believe that there's nothing after death, that, mm. that there's no God, the, the theory of evolution. Right. Right. What, what, what purpose do they have if they're just a developed 
tissue or developed uh, animal. I'm a, I'm a advanced monkey. Then what what purpose is it? So, so you got to create your own purpose. But even that, that's when you die, thing. yeah, that's Where it. Where do you leave? So, so I mean, Solomon <laughs> left his great kingdom to his son, who destroyed it quickly. <laughs> and and Solomon got it all. He said in this experiment, in chapter two. Everything the world has to offer, and yeah. it was all in vain. Vanity, hevel, hevel in Hebrew, vanity, nothing. Right. So it doesn't mean under the sun, meaning with no God, it's nothing. Yeah. It's worth nothing. Now, that's one thing that bothered him, that there's no meaning whatsoever without the fear of God, without God. But another thing that bothered him was that he, he was looking at the reality, and he says that it contradicts, allegedly it contradicts the Torah because the Torah it promises the righteous people to prosper. Right. And Solomon is going out of his, uh, out of his castle, out of, out, of, out of Jerusalem, and he's looking around and he sees the, the, the righteous man suffers while the, the wicked prosper. And you can see example from um, chapter 7. If you can read chapter 7, 15, 16. I've seen everything in my days of vanity. There's a just man who perishes in his righteousness. And there's a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. Yes. So he's, so therefore, well, what does he say after that? Do not be overly righteous, <laughs> nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Exactly. Because he says, Do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? Yeah, yeah exactly. But, but he sees something that, uh, that, that gives him a perplex. Uh, you know, he's, he's perplexed. He doesn't understand because he sees the, the righteous goes down when the wicked prospers. He said, well, what's, what's going on here? Yeah, everyone's uh, having a hard time no matter what you do. Exactly. And they all end in the same ending. They all die. Right. They both die. So he says, so why bother? Why bother to be wicked or righteous? But, but what about the righteous? Yeah. And, and you can see in chapter 8, verse 14, the same thing, the same theme. Yeah, uh, the same theme that he sees. He says, there's a vanity which occurs on earth, and there are just men to whom it happens according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous. And exactly. I said, this is also vanity. He says, the, the righteous get what the wicked deserve and the and and the evil people the wicked get what the righteous deserve what's what's going on in this world this right. world is crazy and, and so that's and, kind of the problem that we have with prosperity gospel is it's not that god didn't make promises of blessing but that the way that the blessing comes is different it, externally you still have to deal with sickness you still have to deal with yeah, and when did, with and, drama and problems and and where did Yeshua promise us that we're going to be prosper in this world if we follow him, if we take up the cross and follow him? Where did he promise that we're going to be the richest and the, you know, the happiest in this world? No, oh, he promised right. persecution. He promised exactly. trials. Exactly. But it, he promised to be with us. Amen. Through. Right? Yeah, through. Through it. So, so last example of this problem that, that Solomon couldn't figure out. In chapter 4, verse 1, again, he sees... The, 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 the suffering people, innocent, apparently innocent people. Then I returned and considered all the oppression that's done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of their oppressors, there's power, but they have no comforter. Yeah. Now, Therefore, I praise the dead who are already dead more than those who are still alive. Here, here's a big hint mm. for, the, for, the righteous, for the righteous suffering servant. Yeah, because he says, uh, comfort, comforter, in Hebrew, menachem, menachem, the comforter is one of the, one of the names that the rabbis gave to the Messiah. Wow, it's so, beautiful. So, 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 and we know that the Messiah sent the Holy Spirit and he called her the and Holy Spirit. And I will Spirit. send you the comforter. comforter. Yeah, so here again, good. Solomon is looking at the reality now, after sin entered the world, and he sees the righteous servant. The, the righteous servant of God is suffering. Again, giving us a hint of the Messiah, of somebody that will not suffer be, 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 even though he's so righteous. Somebody that, that will suffer yeah. because he's so righteous. And that's exactly what Solomon saw, uh, saw. People that suffer because they're so righteous. A hint for, 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 the, for, for the Messiah. Now, on one hand, and I want you to read from, uh, from uh, Ecclesiastic uh, chapter 3.11. On one hand, Solomon saw, what did he see? 
He's made everything beautiful in its time. He's also put eternity in their hearts. So he puts, he puts eternity, he puts, in the Hebrew world is the world. He puts the world in, in people's hearts so that they can look for, they can see God, they can look around them and, and know that God exists. And that reminds us Romans 1, 19, 20. If you can read Romans 1, because this is exactly what Shaul, what Paul is saying. God put the knowledge of himself in, in, in us, we can, we can find him. So he says, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they were without excuse. So on, on one hand, Solomon is saying, God put the world in Hebrew, it says the world in us. We, we can see him yeah. through the world, through creation. We don't have an excuse. On the other hand, here's the problem. And that's chapter 9, 29. Chapter, excuse me, chapter 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. He gives the reason for, 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 for the situation the world is in as he sees it. All right. Truly, this only I have found that God made man upright but they have sought out many schemes. Yeah, now, when you said man in English, in Hebrew it says the man, the first man, the first mm. Adam and Eve. He made Adam and Eve, Yashar in Hebrew it says, he made them perfect. Right. But they sinned. And since, since they sinned, it's a mess. It's what I see now. Right. This is the mess I see now under heaven, under the sun. And it continues in, in chapter 7. Verse 20, yeah, verse 20 continues the same, uh, the same theme now. For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Exactly. Even the, even the, even the, the perfect person, human being that we can see now, he, he has, he has a, a, an eternal sin that he inherited, right. he inherited from, Adam, from Adam and Eve. So, so, so none, none is righteous. And that's exactly what, what, what Shaul, what Paul is saying in Romans, Romans 3, 10, 12, Romans 3, 10, 12. Again, Paul just pointed it out. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is no one who understands. There is none who seeks after God. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's the problem Solomon saw. So on the one hand, he said, God created Adam and Eve, Adam, them, the man, he created them perfect. But they, they have sinned, and now, now I'm, I'm I'm writing this book to show you the mess that is in the world, and of course there's no meaning for not everything is vanity, everything is vain, with our sinful nature under the sun with with, with no God, but now we're getting to the light in the end of the tale, mm. in the end of the book, in the end of Ecclesiastic, he's going back to the the key. Of the of the wisdom literature and the key the, the the if you can sum up the wisdom literature in the Bible it's in it's it's like David did in Psalm 111 verse 10 Psalm 111 verse 10 and it says there the beginning the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom exactly the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that's that's the, 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 the conclusion that Solomon himself is going to reach. Right. That's even under the sun, where I, I, I apparently I don't, see, I don't see in this world, and we know who's the, who's the master of this world, Satan. Of course, what did Yeshua say? I am not of this world. Exactly. So but, he wasn't. But wait a minute, wait a minute before sun. that. <laughs> it, because I, I want you to read what Solomon says in right. the last two verses of his book. So it's chapter 12. Verse 13 and 14, it says, yeah, in the end. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So that's the bottom line of the, of the wisdom literature, the fear of God. Fear God, listen to his word, obey him, even in this reality where you apparently you, you don't see him, because, because, because the world is taken over by Satan. Right. So even in this reality, you have to, by faith, fear God, 
that under the sun you don't you, you don't see but what you have is the witness of of scripture the witness of solomon himself right. you have the word of god to trust so, so so the bottom line is trust him but i want to remind you what did solomon how did solomon get this wisdom this wisdom from heaven and i want you to read from first kings in uh, chapter 3 verse 9 and there solomon is having a dream and god is appearing in his dream and solomon is asking god is god is telling solomon ask whatever you want and in verse 9 it's first king 3 9 he's asking for therefore give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people to that judge i may discern between good and evil so he's asking for this wisdom he's asking for his people for the people right. of israel for, right. for, to the jew first right. right but not only because and in english it's it's different than hebrew but in english it's first kings 34 verse 4 uh, excuse me first kings chapter 4 34 first kings chapter 4 34 it says not the the, the wisdom of, of solomon was it wasn't only for the jewish people right and men of all nations from all the kings of the earth who heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of solomon so the wisdom that god gave him that points to the fear of god that points to the suffering servant was to the jew first but not only like the right. gospel all the nation all the nations were blessed uh, with with this wisdom with the book with the wisdom of solomon and finally with the word of god mm. through the gospel so if we have to sum up what solomon uh, wanted to what what the message of ecclesiastic what was the message of solomon is first there's no uh, no purpose in life under the sun without god there's no purpose for anything everything is vanity everything in, in it is heavily in hebrew heavily is vanity nothing nothing no purpose second the second point that solomon is making in his book is god created men perfect adam and eve was made sinless without sin mm. but they have sinned they have messed up it's not god's fault yeah. it's our fault yeah and the third thing that he uh, emphasizes that, that we all have sinned there's no righteous person no righteous human being because of that uh, initial sin in heaven in in paradise we're, we're all sinful and there's a suffering servant that would suffer that would bear on himself the sins of this world so the the more you keep god's commandment the more you fear god the more you're going to be persecuted in this world right and that's exactly what he saw hmm. he saw that the wicked are having a party a good yeah. day and the and the righteous are suffering pointing to the messiah the ultimate righteous person the ultimate servant of the of god that would take upon himself the the, the sins of the world and, and, and to the great need the comforter exactly and both of them are, are in need of the holy spirit uh you know one for redemption the other one for empowerment but yeah now now the another thing that that he says in the end of the book we we, we will all stand in, in a, 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 a give account according right. to our deeds we, we will all face we we shall all face god in the end and and, and give an account to what we did in this world yeah that's true yeah so the bottom line is fear god and surrender to the word of god hmm. yeah and the only meaning and that's the that's the bottom line right the only meaning to this world cannot be found in this world it yeah. has to come not from under the sun yeah from heaven and exactly. that's exactly that's what happened because we hear in the gospel of john that in the beginning was the word was the word and, and and what's and what's the what's the word in Greek? Logos. Mm -hmm. Logos is the meaning, is the logic. He's the meaning. There's no meaning under the sun uh, I, I, if it's not for the logos, apart That's from the good. logos. And it comes not in this world. You, you cannot find a meaning by yourself. Yeah, right. Remember that uh, Solomon did an experiment? He tried to find meaning to, to all the wisdom of the world, the, the, the servants riches money everything he had everything wow but if he, if you try to find meaning with your power it's meaningless it's vanity the logos came to the world f 
from outside of the world. It's so good. It's, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing that, that Solomon points it out. He makes it clear because he tried. Yeah. He gave it a shot and he said, <laughs> I can't. There's no meaning. And the, and the last thing that we, that we can learn from, from, from Solomon's wisdom, that it came to the Jew first, right? Because he wanted to judge his people. He wanted right. the wisdom, but it was a blessing. Solomon wisdom was a blessing to the entire world. That's yeah? good. Like the gospel. And I want you to read the two, two, more, two more verses than that's it, or two more uh, segments. Um, uh, Ecclesiastic 9, verses 7 and 8. So he said, if you fear God, yeah, if you fear God, if you obey the word of God, What's, what's going to be uh, nine, seven, eight? Go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart. For God has already accepted your works. Let your garments always be white and your head lack no oil. Amen. Now, white clothes, does it remind you something? Yeah, oil? Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. white clothes, right? Yeah, of course. And Yeshua said the same thing, you know, in the gospel, uh, the gospel of John, uh, chapter five, and that's the last verse. Uh, John 5, 24, if you obey my word, if you believe in me, if you trust me and obey my word. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Amen. And that's the conclusion of the book of Ecclesiastic. That's the conclusion of the wisdom literature. And that's the bottom line. Of, yeah. of all the scriptures, what mm. Yeshua just said now, you believe in him, you obey his word, you pass from, from judgment to wow. eternal life. Amen? Amen. I think of, you know, Paul said, if, if in this world only we have hope, we're all men the most pitiable, really the most pitiful. It's and if pitiful. Yeshua it's didn't... The most meaningless is if, if everything in this world is just in this world, and if Yeshua didn't resurrect, yeah, if there's no resurrection. Then it's meaningless, heaval, absolutely. Exactly, and that's what the Ecclesiastic says. of course it's not. Exactly. Under the sun, under the if sun, it's only nothing. men, nothing. We're, we're hopeless. Our righteousness alone, under the sun, hopeless. But praise the Lord, salvation came from outside of the world. Amen. And he existed with God forever. But he, but he bore flesh and took up the cross and died for our sins. So we can have eternal life. We can go from judgment to life. We can go from hopeless to the hope of heaven. Amen. And Amen. that's and that's what you can find out from the wisdom literature, especially yeah. from Ecclesiastic. Amen. Wow. That's so good. Praise the Lord. So Father, I just ask that you would set wisdom into our hearts, Lord. I just pray, Father, for all those who are watching and listening, Lord, that you would just lead us by your spirit, Lord. Let your comforter come and dwell with us. For those who have, who have not accepted you, who don't know you yet, Lord, I just ask that they would that they would pray to you right now and invite you into their life, that the Comforter would come and give them hope and meaning and purpose in their life. And Father, I thank you for this rich book of wisdom. And Lord, I thank you that that book is made clear as we see the light of Yeshua shine on it. And I just ask that you would open our eyes to this and, and, and write it on our hearts. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 If this touched your heart, will you help pay it forward so that others can hear the same message of life? Partner with our team to bring the gospel to Israel and the nations.